Hello, this is Len Melchinsky. This is my contribution to the poster session at the 2020 International Conference of the System Dynamics Society. When Isaac met Jay, the Asimov Forester encounter. Isaac Asimov, arguably the world's greatest writer of science fiction, and Jay Forrester, the inventor of the world's greatest approach to understanding wicked problems, have a lot in common. We know their lives crossed at least once, but they may have influenced each other several times. This is a brief history of the interaction of persons and ideas. Isaac's most famous piece of work is the Foundation Trilogy, and Jay's is Industrial Dynamics. The Foundation Trilogy is based on eight short stories that were published in Astounding Magazine between May of 1942 and January of 1950. Jay's original work was published in the Harvard Business Review in the July-August 1958 issue. The two of them, and many other respected scientists, spent a week together in Rensselaerville, New York in 1975. And that week was titled, A Week with Isaac Asimov. Asimov was already quite famous, and it was an opportunity for scientists to interact with him, and he to interact with scientists. In one of his autobiographies, Asimov claims that the high point of that week was July 30th, when Jay of MIT came to speak. Asimov says that Jay argued his belief in the necessity of a world consisting of small, self-sufficient communities, obviously based on Jay's work with World Dynamics and the Limits to Growth team. Isaac didn't agree and thought that was a move back towards the Dark Ages. The editor of A Week with Isaac Asimov writes that there was a humorous encounter, an exchange between the two, where Asimov explained he had predicted Dr. Forrester 34 years prior to 1975, which would have been 1941, approximately the time that Asimov was starting to write the short stories that turned into the Foundation Trilogy. The key protagonist in the Foundation tril Trilogy is Harry Seldon, who is a psycho-historian. You should all Google that and look at the similarities between psycho-history and system dynamics. I became curious about this after reading something in the System Dynamics listserv, which no longer exists. So in 2011, I had the honor and pleasure of discussing this with Jay about the time he spent with Isaac Asimov. Jay basically told me the same story. He said that Asimov was fond of talking, and when he finished his presentation and Asimov was asked by the moderator if he had any comments, Jay told me that Asimov paused and then replied, he gets it, which was strangely abnormal for Asimov to use so few words. Something similar is written in the SD list served by Jay himself, where he says, when I finished, the chairman asked for reaction from Asimov, who sat in surprise silence. And Jay was able to come into the audience. This is the first time you've seen Isaac with nothing to say. As far as I know, this may have been their only and last encounter. However, in trying to follow up, I found that Asimov and another science fiction author, Frederick Pohl, wrote Our Angry Earth in 1991. That book basically confirms the conclusions of world dynamics 
but doesn't give any credit to Jay or anyone on the limits to growth team. Here are those three laws. And in the back of your mind, all you system dynamicists out there, think about how this might apply. Number one, what is happening will continue to happen. Number two, consider the obvious seriously for few people will see it. And number three, consider the consequences. This is published in a text, a book of matters great and small, also published in 1975 in the chapter called O Keen-Eyed Purer into the Future. I'd like to thank Babak Bahadun, David Ford, and the old SD list server for helping me discover and locate a copy of A Week with Isaac Asimov. I started reading Asimov, I believe, when I was about 13 or 14 years old and found out who Jay was when The Limits to Growth was published when I was a uh, undergraduate. Thank you very much. I wanted to mention that this music comes from Duke Ellington, Take the A Train, recorded by David Amram and Friends. And the reason I chose it is that both Jay and Isaac were not fond of flying and typically preferred to take the train. Thanks. <laughs>